So here is uh, Loïc Perron about to start a uh, vintage uh, route du Rhum using uh, sextant and all the tools for the astral navigation. So good luck to him and a big hello for the, from the GGR team. Good luck, mate. He's actually inside. Wash. Very funky color, showing happiness. It's just gone inside, so we're gonna close it. But we wish him a very good luck, especially regarding the weather, which is actually coming.
going to be a pretty tough race, pretty tough start. So we wish him good luck. See you guys. Cheers. Welcome then to Saint Malo on the north coast of Brittany in France for the start of the 40th anniversary edition of the Route de Rome from Saint Malo to Guadeloupe, 3,542 miles across the Atlantic. Conditions this Sunday, we're coming up to two o'clock local time for the start time. Conditions are perfect, 20 knots, 15 knots from the southeast and uh, only minutes to go before the start line. All the pressure is uh, building up now. The preparation and planning is all behind them. And as I say, conditions just about perfect. Uh, beautiful skies, huge crowds out on the docks, on the beaches and out on Cape Frail, the first uh, passing point on this passage across the Atlantic and say to Guadeloupe. Ahead, we have a big, big Tuesday with uh, storm force winds in the Bay of Biscoe, fairly typical of this race. And we're inside then one minute as the fleet gets ready to rumble across the Atlantic. So the first stage, it's really about uh, pushing hard. It's a rich get richer scenario for the leaders. We have uh, six old teams. The fastest yachts uh, in the world, transoceanic yachts, and uh, the latest of them is uh, Sebastian Joss's uh, Gitana. Favorites for this race, also Massif, winner of the last race in the Amoka class, as we have less than 15 seconds now to go to the start of this uh, record edition of the Route de Rome Destination Guadeloupe. 10 seconds to go and the start line, nobody wants to be over the line. There's a four hour penalty if you're over the start line, so fairly conservative. And the gun goes and we're off and running to Guadeloupe from San Malo. And this is the longest start line in sailing with three kilometers of distance from the two different marks. The fleet is split across the start line with uh, one boat in the middle. So there we see uh, France, Francois Gabar immediately onto the foils on the uh, Massif. The golden boy of uh, French sailing, a winner of the uh, Vendée Globe, first time out, his second participation on this uh, route to rum and the winner of the Amoka class. That was his sign off to the Amoka class before he moved into the old teams with uh, Massif. And of course, one year ago, he was setting off on a new round the world solo record, pulverized the record by over six days. Here we see the first of the uh, Mocha class. Well, we have a record fleet of Mocha class, uh, Mocha yachts here, the Vendée Globe yachts. And then the massive then Francois Gabar winding up this uh, 32 meter long uh, ultimate trimaran, chased there by uh, Thomas Coville. There we see Alex Thompson then. Second in the Vendée Globe. This is his first time on the uh, route to Rum. His first attempt on the route to, route to Rum. He's never done it before because it's always clashed with the uh, Barcelona race, his uh, preference. So Alex Thompson, one of the favourites. He sailed over 70,000 miles on the uh, Hugo Boss and it's his last race uh, before he takes delivery of his new Amoka in the uh, early summer of next year. So there we see Sebastian Joss, I think probably the favourite on the, the old team Edmund de Rothschild. Joss has uh, never won a major transatlantic. This is his third attempt at the route to Rome, and he's done more training. He is certainly the uh, local uh, media favorite. This is a Verdi design. And then we see uh, SMA there leading this little group of uh, Mocha 60s. And then we're on board now with uh, Lloyd Piron, on board the 12-meter-long uh, uh, Happy. Loic is the holder of the uh, course record for this passage. Won in 2014 on board the uh, Maxi Trimaran Bank Populaire. And there we see Sebastian Joss then. Record is expected to fall. The record is uh, just over seven days, and we're expecting the uh, first ulti min probably next Saturday morning. So we're talking about between five and a half and six, uh, six, just a little bit over six days, so depending who you listen to. And that's uh, Thomas Coville on board Sodebo, 
previous holder of the solo round the world record, which was broken one year ago or just under a year ago by uh, Francois Gabar. So the leading all teams at the moment uh, in about uh, 15, 16 knots of breeze are already hitting 30 knots at time. So Thomas Coville won the Amoka class back in 1998. And there we see Loic Piron again on this diminutive 12 meter uh, trimaran, which he bought. He was going to do the last race on this yacht. And uh, he was had to step into the uh, shoes of Armel Cleash, get on board, bunk popular at the very last minute. Armel Cleash was injured, and uh, they're just seeing the bow of uh, Hugo Boss. There we see Jan Elias. And Loic Perron just checking uh, under the mainsail of uh, the Happy, this little trimaran. Clean start by uh, all the fleets so far. And the Amokas then just, the solo skippers winding their uh, 60 foot yachts up. Now looking at the multi 50s, well, there are six multi 50s, probably the most fragile uh, yachts in the fleet. And they're now fitted with their uh, foils. They have one design foils fitted over the course of last winter. And the champion on this course is the Erwin LaRue who is looking to uh, complete the double, won in 2014. And this is his third participation. Three times the winner of the Transact Jacques Vabre is Erwin LaRue. And the leader, top hope, then uh, Alan Rura, then the youngest skipper on the last Vendée Globe, has a new boat, which has uh, foils now, fitted foils through the winter. Recently launched, relaunched the boat with foils. Only 25 years old. Swiss skipper and his boat is a Finocomp design and then one of the latest or the very latest yacht then is the uh, Chiral there, super fast VPLP design only launched two months ago, the first of the new generation Emokas for Jeremy Biu. Big question mark is whether an Emoka of only two, uh, two months old can complete this course. We're expecting 40 knots uh, on Tuesday in this big storm in the Bay of Biscay. It's just going to be a really delicate uh, process to try and get the uh, protect the uh, skippers and the uh, yachts as they go through this uh, big storm. So there we see uh, EDEC, Francis uh, Joyon, crude record holder around the world, slightly older generation team. Just racing the newest of the old teams there out to the right. Just the windward is uh, Edmund de Rothschild, then uh, Sebastian Joss. So Joyong's uh, crew record is 40 days and 23 hours round the world with a six man crew, previous holder of the solo round the world record. And he did exceed the, the uh, round the world record, as I say, just under a year ago to this man. Francois Gabar, winner of the Bondi Globe uh, two editions ago. Really has been pretty much unbeaten in his career since moving out of the uh, Figaro solo class. And then Thomas Covilla, say 50 years old. This is his last race with this uh, old team. The old team is sold and he will move into uh, a new boat. His boat is going to Yves Le Blavec. So Bank Populaire against the massive uh, Armel Eclias, previous winner of the uh, Vendée Globe, or the holder of the Vendée Globe title. And his uh, Amokri capsized in April. And so it's been a real catch up for Armel. So these old teams then leading the uh, charge across the Atlantic. We're just getting out of the channel tonight. And perfect conditions now with that big storm as they head for Guadeloupe. Les ambitions sur la route du Rhum, c'est assez clair, essayer de gagner. Je sais que ça va être dur parce que la, la concurrence en ultime, elle est, euh, elle est assez extraordinaire. C'est la, la première fois qu'il y a ces, tous ces grands bateaux qui volent.
Et bien toutes nos voiles sont des voiles fabriquées par Norseize en 3DI. C'est vrai qu'on a modifié pas mal de voiles pour euh, au retour du Tour du Monde. Les voiles étaient ceci dit en super bon état, mais on a beaucoup fait évoluer le bateau, on a mis des foils donc le bateau va plus vite. Euh, et on a adapté le, bah, les voiles en, en fonction des nouvelles performances du bateau. Eh ben, je travaille avec Norse depuis maintenant euh, quasiment 10 ans, un petit peu moins. Je commence à travailler avec Norse quand je suis passé en Imoca, quand j'ai préparé le Vendée Globe 2012, en partie parce qu'ils avaient développé une membrane, un tissu, qui avait à l'époque euh, vraiment mais aucune concurrence. Il y avait vraiment une avance, ils avaient énormément investi en recherche et développement pour arriver à un tissu qui était résistant, euh, léger, euh, solide. Et derrière, ils avaient une équipe à Vannes, chez North Sail France, qui était, qui était super performante, avec des gens qui m'avaient accompagné auparavant, d'ailleurs, en Figaro. Que bonne raison pour travailler avec eux. Et c'est important de créer une proximité entre l'équipe, le design team, les architectes, la voilerie. Voilà, c'est un travail d'équipe pour faire en sorte que le bateau, dans la globalité, avance vite. Et c'est ce qu'on fait avec North depuis maintenant longtemps, pas mal d'années, et, et on en est ravis.